I know you already know. He blesses me with you. Thank you, Pastor. I feel encouraged. Um, just such a wonderful presence of the Lord here. Amen. Man, thank you, Jesus. So, um, God just works in mysterious ways. Can someone say amen? amen? Thoughts are not our thoughts. The ways are not our ways. All I know is he's faithful. And what the Lord began, and what he has established, what he has called, what he has promised, what he set in place, he sees the end of the story. And sometimes we're in between. And I, 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 I don't know what the Lord would say today. I just want to read through Acts chapter 3 with you with permission to just talk. However the Lord would be. Um, I don't have an outline and figured out, but I have something that I believe is here. And I would ask God, would you just speak to us? What else could we do? Peter said, Lord, where can we go? I don't understand challenge facing some obstacles there's no way that your word as you've declared something that doesn't make sense yet you will possess the words of everlasting life so let me trust you let me receive you let me believe you let me know as we've said this morning God is going to finish what he began that he is going to establish that he sees the end of the story and that his word would never return void and his word is so powerful, so mighty, and it was hard for the followers to understand that. And here comes this centurion who was the Roman and a warrior, and yet he had a servant sick, and he he didn't he sent his servants to come to ask Jesus. And on the way, on the way, Jesus was going there, sent the servants back. You don't even need to come; just send your word. And Jesus said, I have not seen faith like this in all of Israel. But this was a man who was under authority, who understood the power of a word. He understood that if God sends his word, he sends his power. He sends healing. He sends his presence. So I'm praying today, may the Lord send his word to our hearts and encourage us with, I think, the heart behind what I see in Acts chapter 3. We look at this story of a of a blind, of a, a beggar rather, who's who's at this gate, crippled beggar at this gate called Beautiful, <clears throat> and it's been his whole life at this gate. But God always had a plan for this man. God always had a plan for this man, and all these years, and moment by moment, but something happened, and we were singing about it this morning, Ruth. Something happened. There was a shift that had happened in the kingdom, and, 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 and Jesus had come. Jesus had demonstrated the fullness of the kingdom. He demonstrated power to save, deliver, heal, rebuke demons, crush the power of the enemy. How many of you know that's exciting? God is able. There's no disease or darkness or, or sin or sickness that can stand before our God. He's able. He's mighty. Disciples had rallied around the reality that Jesus was doing and untying the yoke of oppression and setting the captive free and opening blind eyes. And now Jesus crucified and resurrected. And now when they see Jesus ascending into, into the clouds. And with one, with one word, which was to wait. Waiting means I have to surrender, I have to yield, I have to allow God to do what he, he what church? Promised he would do it. His word doesn't return void, he promised, he promised, he declared, he sees it. How impossible is this? I work with guys every day with Teen Challenge, I went through Teen Challenge 30 years ago. I want to honor Perlindo Salinas, who recently retired. After all these years serving as the director and his wife Joyce, good personal friends of ours. What a mighty man. I keep 
coming in the team challenge. I'm going to say, well, it's actually in my Bible. My dad wrote me this June 22nd, 1993. Is that 30 years already? Your first day in Teen Challenge, you were born again. Praise God, my dad wrote. June 22nd, 1993, my dad said, happy birthday. <laughs> and when I walked into Teen Challenge, there was this man with a big mustache, quiet. His name was Arlindo Salinas. And he just started on staff within two days of me coming. And I was his first student. I, who's my advice? You guys know her, Linda? Okay, I know you do. And uh, wow, what a testimony that God would see. And I honor him all these years. And he, he's poured into me and loved me. And he retired about four months ago. And, uh, and every day I'm faced with the reality. When her, Linda was here, it was a lot easier. I can tell you that. Because I love to dream and think, and I'm excited and running around, and Herlindo sees the big picture and the details and all the little pieces, and now I'm like, oh, Lord. So what am I doing? I'm waiting. God, anoint your son. Help me. Help me, Jesus. Every day these guys come in. What am I doing? It's impossible to help these men that come in shattered and devastated and unable to get past the darkness in their life. I can't do anything. Teen Challenge can't help these men. There's no program we offer, but there's power in the name of Jesus. He still saves and delivers. And God is, God will not share his glory. God is God alone. God is sovereign over the universe and his throne is heaven and earth is his footstool and he sees these men's lives whose families have been praying and interceding and hoping and wanting. There's this young guy I think about right now named Nick. Came in last week and just such a, a glazed over, wasn't even there and finally I go around and the guys do, uh, we call it a mandatory walk and they go around the parking lot and I'm out there walking with Nick. He was going the opposite way of everyone else. occurred to me God is good. but it occurred to me how his family has longed to see him for so long and his father in heaven wants to reach him and give him back and restore him again but it's so impossible to do this in anything else except the power of God so what we're talking about is today is God has a plan. He has a purpose. We see this in Acts chapter 3. But we're saying about it this morning, Ruth. Jesus, the story didn't end with the ascension. It didn't end with the crucifixion. God says, but I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you power. I'm going to give you the anointing of my son Jesus to dwell in your life. What? Yes. means I'm broken and empty and I've got nothing else. Oh, but the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords establishes His throne in my soul. And what happened in the day of Pentecost just precipitating this miracle is the fact that they encountered that the story's not over yet. There's still power that what Jesus had as the Son now that He promised that you would be my sons and I'm not going to leave you as orphans. I'm not abandoning you, but in fact, rejoice that I'm going away. Because I go away, now power is going to come into your life. Now there's going to be a new beginning of who I am in you. And Jesus got after this in John chapter 16. He said, look at this. You've come to me and you've prayed to me. But I want you to know something. When you pray in my name, it's not just me you're asking. But you literally can come to the Father. The same way I ask the Father. The same way I pray. The same way I believe. No, I you. It excites me because I've spent so many years trying 
to this truth of faith. Help me, Jesus. I don't want to give up any territory. I don't want to walk away. I don't want to get used to things being in a structure and in a way where it looks like it's never going to change. But God is able. Look at the story. So now they've received the Holy Spirit. It's the day after. And it's Acts chapter 3 and verse 1. And Peter and John, who've had this touch from God, come now walking and doing what the structure of their day had entailed for many, many years. Let me hear you say years. Year after year. This was what you did. Look at what it says in verse 1. One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer at 3 in the afternoon. Now I like that. Because there, my understanding is when you go up to the temple, there's times of prayer. And those times of prayer are the starting points, the beginning points of everything you're going to do that day. So you might say to me, Pastor Mike, why is it three in the afternoon? They must have slept in. <laughs> that would be all right. But you know, that's not what happened. They came for the morning prayer. And then in this climate, because it gets so hot, you take a siesta in the afternoon. But you don't just jump back into what you left off doing. What do you do? Come to Jesus again. Come to the Father. This is a model of how I want to live my life. So yeah, I've got to carry on with that project. But before I do, I'm going to seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. And so it's three in the afternoon. Now the the heat has passed. It's ready to come back for the rest of the day. But let's go to the temple for prayer. Let's seek God again. That's what this 21 days of fasting is all about. It's not about just not eating. It's about saying, God, I want you more. I'm hungry for you. You know, I've heard it said, Pastor, what is revival? What is revival? The revival isn't how much of God you have, but it's how much of God you want. Give me a, that's why when I put my earthly appetites aside, it stimulates a hunger in me to say, God, I need you. And so it's three in in the afternoon and they're coming up for prayer. And look at verse two. Now a man crippled from birth. Let me hear you say from birth. That's, that's an important component there. Crippled from birth. And what does it say? He was being carried, crippled from birth and was being carried to the temple gate called beautiful can you say beautiful Beautiful. all right where he was put every day to beg let me hear you say every day i promise you're not gonna have to repeat a lot i'm just i want these are important things from birth every day what's the name of the gate beautiful to beg from those going into the temple court so this man was part of the landscape this was his place this is essentially how this man survived because he had no way of making income or surviving. And so he was put at this. And isn't it interesting, the name of the gate? Beautiful. Beautiful. As I was preparing this, one of the things God reminded me is that in Ecclesiastes 3.11, it says this, that God will make everything beautiful in his time. Here was a miracle this whole man's life. He was waiting. He wanted. I'm sure he would have been desperate to be free. But God put him in a place and said, you know what? I'm going to make beautiful one day. Your miracle's coming. Don't give up. I'm putting you at the name of the gate to declare that I will make everything beautiful in its time. And so what we see here is that this man was able to survive because of the generosity. And he couldn't do it on his own. And he was put there to beg from those going in. And then in verse 3, it says that when he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for money. So here comes the divine appointment. This man is being put down. Peter and John, who had just now not only knew that Jesus could do it, not only had seen him do it, they had never done a miracle. This hadn't been something now that Jesus was gone. Everyone was like, this Jesus thing is over. But, but something happened the night before. 
But God changed something in them and there. I don't understand the details. All I know is that it was normal for this man to be here every day of his life. He was put there. They knew who he was. They saw his face. But look what happened. It says that when, they, when he saw Peter, he asked for money. Look at verse 4. It says, Peter looked straight at him as did John. Wow. Did they not know what he looked like? They knew. But God had changed the way they saw things that day. Nothing else was different in this day for all these years this man was put there except something had happened in their heart and minds. And when they saw this man, they said, wait, wait. God's not done yet. There's a, still a miracle waiting for this man. I don't know. I don't know this. It says they look straight at him. John, can I tell you one thing, church? Just one thing. Maybe important. We get so used to the system. Nothing wrong. I love it. We the church celebrate. Praise God. But be open and sensitive to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Now, be, be open and sensitive to what to say. And it may be a loved one we were praying for this morning. It may be a miracle that hasn't happened all these years. You're kind of like, well, let's try to pray again. unseen and unheard and just coming along and no one knows and sees can I give you that's what we do a teen challenge with the men I give them whatever you've brought into the house today whatever wound whatever hurt it may be here and it may have been there for a long time but God sees and we give people dignity when we're willing to look their needs in the eye. And I say, well, I'm just, I'm so tired of this. It doesn't change. Well, keep looking. But not with human eyes and not with earthly thinking, but with the power of God. And maybe one day, believe one day, stand on God that one day He will make you a whole. He will restore. He will give back. And so... They looked him straight at him, as did John. And then Peter said, look at this. Verse 4, he said what? Look at us. I can imagine this man had seen thousands and thousands of people. And sometimes when you're in brokenness long enough, you don't look up anymore. You just look down. I don't want to be rejected again. I've been passed by so many times. As you know, I went through years ago, can I tell you the greatest bondage in my life? More than twice. The greatest bondage was that I couldn't see anymore. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says that the God of this age darkens your eyes, closes your mind so that you cannot see the light of the gospel. Oh, well, you're a drug addict. You're never going to change. You're in this place. You're in this and you, Let me tell you, I believe that. And even when I came to Teen Challenge, I, w I didn't even know that I could change. I didn't have hope, but I began to see it in other people. I saw those miracles unfolding. But let me just tell you, sometimes one of the strongholds of the enemy is to get us to put our head down. Get us to give up hope. What is hope? Hope doesn't mean I've received it. But man, God has something. And what they're saying is lift up your eyes again. King David said in Psalms, I lift up my eyes from where does my help come? But from the maker of heaven and earth. The enemy wants to get in the way of our vision for what God can do in Bethany and in our community and in the homeless and hurting and in the mission field and in the broken lives. The world's looking away and even the individuals that need the miracle, their eyes are down. But what do we do with the anointing? We say, oh no, look up. Oh no, look up. The story's not over yet. And so he said, look at us. So the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. Hallelujah. What am I going to get? This is a good day today. Amen. Man, when I lift up my eyes, something good. And you know what? 
look at the next verse. Look at verse 6. What does it say? Then Peter said, what did, we, what did he say? Silver or gold? I do not have. Hmm. But what I have, I give you. Oh, and then he declares in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk. Amen. Wow. Silver or gold, I do not have. Silver and gold. Nothing wrong with helping meet some people. But if I am giving my own human resources, yes, the result is going to be human resources. But sometimes God allows me to be devoid of myself and my control and my ability to do anything else except to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh, and that's when I, Jesus, I believe, told the disciples when you go out, don't take me extra. next day and the next day again nothing wrong he's surviving but sometimes the miracle God has allowed us to survive to a certain point but then God says now transformation I don't want you to just survive and get through and make it another day but I want to free you I want to heal you I want to break through those areas where you've been unable to walk in what I called you to do and you've been waiting a long time oh what a what a word from the Lord I do not have it. What did he have, though? What did he have? The church. What do we have? What did Ruth sing to lead us in singing this morning? What do we have? The Holy Spirit. Oh, I just want to encourage you that the answers you have, the answers you have, may not be down on a The Lord of Lords has given us access to His kingdom, and to His fullness, and to His power. Was there ever a battle that Jesus didn't overcome? A disease, a darkness, a sin, a blind person? Was there ever a the King of Glory fell in me? Oh, thank you, Lord. When Paul prayed in Ephesians, he prayed a powerful prayer, and he said in Ephesians three, I pray. No, I pray that you receive power from the Lord. And that he will strengthen you in the inner man, and that Christ will dwell in your hearts by faith. That power. Philippians chapter 2 declares that it is God's name, the greatest name, the name of all names, in his name. What would happen? Everywhere in, in heaven, on earth, and guess what? Under the earth. I don't even know what that means. I just know that. In the name of Jesus. And it isn't just that I know how to say the name of Jesus, but what does that mean, church? He's dwelling in me. He's alive in my life. Oh. oh thank you, Lord. It isn't just that I know these words and I've copied someone's prayer, but There's these sons from the Jewish high priest that learned these prayers. There's seven of them. They were called the sons of Sceva in Acts 19. And what did these sons, they learned the prayer and they start going around and repeating the words, saying, well, in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches. And one day, <laughs> this man who was demon-possessed, the demon spoke back and said, Jesus we all know, Paul we've heard of, who are you? <laughs> and, and you know what happened? That, that man demonically empowered stripped them, beat them so bad, they all seven of them ran away naked and bleeding. And can I tell you, sometimes that's what we do. Well, what's the church over here doing? Or what's this thing say? And we're following other methods of other men. But no, we have power from the Holy Spirit. 
God can work in us and it may not make sense. No one else may be doing it but God. So what I'm saying to you is as a child of God, you have access to his power. Access to a place of victory, a place of prayer. When I go to pray, uh, certainly there's felt needs and I voice those needs. But when I go to pray, guess what I do? I enter into a place. And guess who's already there? And guess what he's doing? Oh, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father already praying. He already knows what I'm going through. He sees my struggles when I go in to pray. I'm not trying to get my words to get through to God. I'm just trying to find out, God, what are you saying? What is it you're doing in this miracle? In Acts chapter 3, this man was, was, was crippled all these years, but there was a moment that God saw him because Peter and John understood that Jesus was still here working. In that moment, he declared over him. And look what he says again. Silver and gold I do not have, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, walk! And I just want to encourage you, church, what you have access to. And, and here's what's interesting. Did he get up and walk? Not with that. Look at verse 7. What does it say? It says, taking him by the right hand. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, once he helped him up, what happened? The man's feet and ankles became strong. Here's, here's what I see, church. Here's what I wonder. We're hearing the declaration of the word which carries all the power of heaven in it, but sometimes it's only got this far. And sometimes what I need is someone to take my hand and say, walk with me. Help me believe for this. Walk with me, pastor. Just talking to pastor in the, in the foyer, in the, in the entryways, he just described his ministry here. What I felt was someone taking my hand saying, Mike, you can do this. Don't let fear, don't let discouragement in your life. That's why we're in church today, because we can't do it alone. We're called to community church, and we're getting the declaration of the word, but sometimes we need a hand up. We need some, yeah, and you know what it would have made? What if they prayed that prayer over him and the miracle was there, but the man stayed in his condition? Could you imagine such a thing? I couldn't. But he said, no, no, I'm going to help you. I've declared it. I believe it with you. Take my hand. Let's walk in it. And that's what we do in Teen Challenge, Pastor. We see, we have an army of men who are taking each other's hands saying, man, we're lost. We don't know, but man, brother, don't stay in it. Come on out. We'll be praying over the guys that they're detoxing in their bunk and all darkness is running through their head and we're just speaking in the name of Jesus. He said, you know what, Mike? I'm going to be okay. You're right. You're going to be okay. Take my hand. Let's walk. That happens daily. Overwhelmed. I think about my brother Tyler who came in struggling over. He's like, oh man, my head's... Go and I said, let's walk in it. Come on outside. Let's go do a lap. We do a lap around the parking lot. What am I doing? I'm saying it's not just words. It's not just an intellectual idea, but there's power. You don't have to walk alone. Let's walk together. Find out where the need is. Look the need in the eye. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Reach out your hand and say, come on church with me. Come on to prayer meeting. Come on to walk on Monday together with the ladies and me, me. When we do life together, let's not do it alone. Taking his right hand, he helped him up. And instantly, the man's feet and ankles became strong. Oh. See, I don't think this was just about a man getting a miracle of feet and ankles. I think this was about a person who, lie, who God had given a mantle of calling and purpose to. And he, yes, he healed his ankles and feet, but it wasn't just so his body could be healed, it's so he could walk as a testimony. Yeah, look what it says. Look what it says. We're almost done. He jumped to his feet, verse 8, and began to walk. And then he went with them into the temple courts. Look what he's doing. Walking and jumping, hallelujah, and praising God. Wow. He didn't just go on the better for us. No, no, no. He said, man, look, I'm free. Hallelujah. And so say amen. This is 
isn't information. This isn't a program. This isn't something. This is God saying, I'm alive. I'm a miracle working God. And even if it hadn't happened all these years, the story's not over yet. Look what happens. Last part. When all the people, verse 9, when all the people saw him walking and praising God, verse 10, they what? Go to verse 10, what did they say? What? They recognized him. They recognized him. I'm going to read one little verse in just a second. Tie this all together. They recognized him as what? As the same man who used to sit begging at the temple called Beautiful, and they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened. Here's the last piece of this puzzle. If you look in Acts chapter 4, in verse 22, it gives us one more piece of information. Acts chapter 4, verse 22. That mean? That mean? That means that Jesus' whole 33 years of life, who had walked by this man? Jesus did. To heal everyone else, not him. Could have healed him years before, even. What's the word of the Lord, church? I will. Make everything beautiful in its time. Can I suggest to you something? God cares about us. He doesn't want us in our depravity. He doesn't want us in our brokenness. He doesn't want us in our pain. But sometimes part of our story is being in that place long enough where when he does the miracle, people will recognize there's no way that you, you could, you're that God. Do you realize what God did by waiting all those years? This man's face was enshrined to all of Israel. So whenever anyone saw him, you're that God. What I'm saying is that what the enemy means for harm, God will use for good. Sometimes in the period of waiting and praying and wanting and not getting anywhere and I don't understand it but it doesn't mean God is done with his story go ahead give God praise amen he's not done with his story there's still a miracle waiting and I'm saying yes hurry up and do it Lord I don't want to wait any longer but that's not up to me all I know is that what God has said he will do he will do all I know And I want you to know God is not vacant in what he's promised over your life. Promised over your mind. Promised over your family. Promised over your calling. God is going to make beautiful everything in its time. Everything. And sometimes the longer the wait, the bigger the reason. Can you say amen? amen. So that's my prayer and I hope that you receive from the Lord that truth today in your soul. And that you realize next time you see a miracle that hasn't happened yet in a man or a woman or a circumstance, have hope. Amen. That's my prayer. Can we pray, Pastor? Can we pray? I want to pray with you and agree with you. If you would like... Um, For you, or if you have something in your life that has taken longer than you would have ever imagined, but you're waiting on God for it, could we pray? Could we just come in agreement with each other today? Is that okay? Amen. And give it to God.
You can stay where you're at. If you want to come forward, you can and, and, and express that to the Lord. But if that's you and you'd like to lay something specific before God, would you stand? And if you'd like to come forward, you can as well. And we'll pray and agree with you personally. But I want to give you an opportunity to respond. And just say, Lord, it could be a loved one. It could be a circumstance. But I want to pray. And I want to pray with you. And I'm going to ask my wife to come as well. Sarah, would you come with me? We're going to pray over you. So we're going to believe God today. Wherever you're at, a loved one, I know, come on up, honey. I know I have some miracles in my life that I'm waiting on God to do. <laughs> and we want to come and agree with you and just say, Lord, make that beautiful. If that's your heart today, I want you to stand. Otherwise, stay seated. I see you there as well. Amen? Amen. Okay. If that's your heart, stand where you are. Let's pray. Let's agree. And um, I'm just going to open it up in prayer, and then I'm going to ask my wife to pray over you. Um, and I want to pray for specifically, Lord, I just lift up our eyes. Lord, right now, here we are. Thank you, Lord. We need a touch from you. There is a loved one. There's a miracle. There's a place that needs what only you can do. And I want to come in agreement and pray, Father, for hope right now over these precious lives, over these men and over these women. God, as we've been here today in worship, we've heard your word. Father, I want to come in agreement. Many of us have responded and, 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 and said, God, yes. Thank you, Lord. And, and maybe even we've given up some hope. We've given up some territory to those places in our life. Mm. And we've decided, well, it's just been that way over and over again. Can I pray right now? Father, I ask in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I can't do anything else, but I come and agree with these precious prayers, these hearts, these lives, these names, these miracles. And I come in agreement right now and I pray, oh God, would you put hope back in place? Put hope back in reach. Put hope back in these minds and back in these lives, back in this prayer life. Would you pour your spirit out again? Thank you, Lord. Remind us you're not done yet, God. Father, I want to pray an anointing over your sons and daughters as they're praying and seeking you, God, that they will have hope again. Thank you, Lord. And walk in that hope with strength and ankles and feet to walk in the mantle you've given them. Father, we ask for this in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Honey, would you pray for us? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you do not leave us. You do not forsake us, God. Thank you that you are with us. You are with us in the fire. You are closing the mouths of the lion. You are, um, God, calling the storms. You are with your word saying, be still. God, and Lord, I just pray, Lord Jesus, for the hearts and the minds of those that are here, God. First of yes, all, we Lord. pray over the actual needs that are represented, God. We pray for the healings. We pray for the deliverance, God. We pray for this restoration, Lord. We pray mm. for God, the, the miracles, Lord. We pray for God. It hasn't been time yet, God. We do trust you that you make all things beautiful in their time. Yes, God, Lord. your time, knowing the end of the story, knowing that all the pieces need to be put in place, God, for your perfect will, Lord Jesus, whatever it might be. Thank you, So, Lord. God, we pray first for the needs that are represented here. We pray for the miracles, Jesus God, and we name. continue to be like the widow knocking on the door saying, Lord, yes, Lord. make a way, Lord, make a way, Lord, Lord, heal. God, and Lord, we pray right now, Lord, I just ask, Lord, for us to have just a continual posture mm, of Let it be so, Lord. Of, of hope, let it be Lord so, Jesus, Lord. That we would let it be so, God, Lord. Shrink oh, together, shrink yes, up, Lord. God, we, would, we would have a posture of oh, expectation, God, you, God. That you are a move, God, God. Only you can you move, God. You are not a man do what you only you would do, God. God, so Jesus I just pray name. that we would, Jesus our hearts name. and our minds, Jesus Lord, name. would be lifted up. And Jesus would know name. that what you say, Jesus you name. do, Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. So I just ask in the mm. name of Jesus for the hearts and the minds of the people here, Lord, to be encouraged. God, yes. I just, um, in this moment, feel like we need to 
all together gathered in this place, Jesus we name. need to speak out that yes. we trust you. We trust you, we Lord. Know that you're at work. We trust we you, know Lord. That you're doing things that Declare we that, even God. see. You're laying in, in, in and <clears throat> putting into place, God. Thank uh, you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And for revival, yes, and for hearts bring it, to be Lord. Changed, God, and Hallelujah. We need to be put back in this place, which is under our feet. Thank and you, so, Lord. God, I just pray, Lord Jesus, that, the, that the, this body would be strengthened and strengthened, Lord. God, and that they would go forward. And yes, the, Lord. The, the, the ministry and mm. the gospel, Lord, would just Jesus. be on their lips, God, and in their hands and in their feet, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Of this community, mm. and in doing Hallelujah. so, Lord, bring glory and honor to you alone, God. Lord, we recognize your awesomeness. We yes, we do. We recognize, Lord Jesus, right now that you are sovereign, you are greater than anything we face. Jesus but God, name. we know that our hearts can be discouraged. God, yes, so Lord. I do pray for hope to yes, be restored. Lord. I pray, Lord Jesus, that God, God we could just uh, rejoice yes, Father. in knowing yes, that Lord. the mere Hallelujah. Oh, yes. You're able. You're worthy. You're mighty. Yes, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you.